Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you're new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on descriptive statistics and data visualization. And this video is about dot plots. Now dot plots on paper are actually very simple. Now just because dot plots are fairly simple to understand does not mean they aren't useful. Sometimes the most useful tools are the simplest because they are easy to construct and easy to understand. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and learn about dot plots. So in previous videos in this playlist, we learned about box plots. Now box plots are fundamental data visualizations in descriptive statistics. They can tell us about the shape of our data, the distribution of our data, if our data is symmetrical, if it's skewed, or if we have certain outliers. So in this case, remember, we were looking at salary data for three cities. So here we can see that the median, which is the middle line in our box, is around $75,000 we can see that the first quartile, which is the left side of the box, and the third quartile, which is the right side of the box, that represents the middle 50% of our data. So that's about $50,000 to $100,000. Then of course, we have the dots over here on the extreme right of our plot. Those are outliers. So those are observations that meet certain criteria that we actually put beyond the right-hand boundary, and we look at those and go, wow, those are pretty out of the ordinary. So box plots are very useful and you see them quite often. And just like box plots are useful in their own way, dot plots are also useful because they offer us some different tools and different ways of looking at our observations. So what is a dot plot? We have one over here on the left. So in a dot plot, each observation is represented by its own dot placed above the horizontal axis. The vertical axis represents frequency like we would see in a histogram. Now note that any rounding of values essentially creates what are called bins like in a histogram. So in this salary data, the data is rounded to the nearest $100. So that rounding creates natural bins in this dot plot. Now note in addition to that, that certain software packages also create bins automatically. So let's look at each of these bullet points over here on the right and how it affects the dot plot over here on the left. So of course, each dot in our dot plot represents one single observation. Now the height of the dots represents the number of observations in that bin. And speaking of bins, we can see that between say $50,000 and $100,000, the software created eight bins for us. So in many ways, what we essentially have in a dot plot a sort of a histogram with the individual observations visible within what would normally be, say, the bars of the histogram. So this box plot was created in JUMP, or J-M-P, as you will see it spelled out. And in JUMP, we can actually take our mouse and hover over each individual dot to get the value for that observation. And as you will see here in a few minutes, we could actually highlight certain ranges of our box plot and learn more about an individual part of it. So a lot of what you get in a box plot is software dependent, but they all pretty much do the same thing. Now in this dot plot, we can see that the vast majority of our observations are concentrated between say $25,000 over here on the left and $125,000 over here sort of towards the middle. Now we do have a certain number of observations beyond that. So the dot plot shows us the shape of our data. We can see that our data is right skewed. We have the bulk sort of over here in the middle, and then we have a tail over here to the right. And of course, we have an extreme outlier over here on the right. The first thing we would do is check our data to make sure that that is actually the right observation. So as I always say in previous videos, when you see an observation that is this out of the ordinary, one of the first things you want to go back and do is check your data. So in this case, you could easily type $400,000 when you meant to type $40,000. So yes, use these visualizations like box plots and dot plots to get an overall shape of your data, but also use them to do some exploratory data analysis and look for anything that might be out of the ordinary or an error. 
So some potential basic data cleaning. So all of that is essentially what a dot plot is. So what are some uses of dot plots? So again, they are a simple way to visualize the shape of our data. They are easy to interpret. We can tell if our data is pulled or skewed in one direction. Like in our previous slide, the data is pulled to the right. It's skewed to the right because of those higher salaries. Or is our data symmetrical like a bell curve or a normal distribution? It's an easy way to identify potential outliers like we saw in the previous dot plot. So it also makes comparing characteristics of data between categories or groups very easy using color and or shape. Now again, this depends on the software you're using. So I'm using Jump in this video, but things like SPSS, Minitab, the open source software packages and things like that could probably do this as well. Dot plots maintain the original data points. So it's what I would call high fidelity, which makes seeing relative differences easier. So you can hover over individual points to find information about that observation. You can select groups of points and find out different things about that group, again, depending on the software. But in dot plots, we never lose the original data points. So it's very granular, very detailed, since each observation is visible. So again, before we looked at our salary data, the salary data is actually comprised of salaries in three different cities, Atlanta, Cincinnati, and San Francisco. So when we did our box plots for each individual city, we can see where the median falls for each city, the first and third quartile fall for each city, and of course, any outliers. So if we take a step back and look at this, we can see that Atlanta over here on the left and Cincinnati in the center are very similar. The medians, the quartiles, and even the outliers are kind of in the same area. And of course, San Francisco is different. The salaries tend to skew much higher. In this case, it's upward. So we can see that the data is skewed in this case upward. The median to third quartile box is stretched out. And of course, the boundary is stretched out beyond that. And then of course, we have this extreme outlier up here in the top right. So yes, box plots are incredible. They are very useful tools that a lot of us have seen before, even in like grade school. And when comparing groups, we can actually see the differences between the distributions of each group or category. Now dot plots can do the same thing for us, but in a slightly different way. Let's look at that. So this is our dot plot coded by color. We can see that Atlanta is in blue, Cincinnati is in red, and San Francisco is in green. Now we are breaking a fundamental rule in data visualization, unfortunately, in this and the other graphs. We should not have red and green together. And the reason we should not do that is because of red-green colorblindness. Individuals with red-green colorblindness would not be able to distinguish between Cincinnati and San Francisco in this case. And I actually left it in here on purpose so I could tell you that. We would usually go ahead and change those colors to something like orange or purple, or some other colorblind safe color palette. Now one way around that is to use shape, and we'll talk about that here in a second. So that being said, what can we learn from our data by the color coded dot plot? Well, if we look over here on the left, we can see that we sort of have a jumble of all three cities. So say between $25,000 over here on the left and $125,000 over here towards the middle, we can see we sort of have a mix. We have some red dots, we have some blue dots and some green dots. However, when we go beyond that, we can see that we have almost exclusively green dots, which of course is San Francisco. And we have the extreme outlier over here on the far right. So what can we learn from this dot plot? Well, we can see that below say $125,000, the three cities seem to be pretty equal. However, once we go above $125,000, all the salaries are almost exclusively San Francisco. And that makes sense. If you know anything about the housing market in the US, you know that the salaries in San Francisco are very high because of Silicon Valley, but of course also is the cost of living. So it should not surprise us that in absolute dollar terms, we're gonna find the higher salaries in San Francisco as compared to Cincinnati and Atlanta. And in this case, color allows us to do that. Now we can also code by color and shape. Now, I would not recommend doing this data visualization. It's way too hard to read. 
But I wanted to show you that because we are using individual observations, individual dots, we could actually code them by shape as well. So it is true that one way to help with colorblind individuals looking at your visualizations, you can use shape in addition to or as a substitute for color. So again, I would not recommend doing a visualization like this, but I just wanted to show you that it could be done. So what if we separate out each group? So here is Atlanta. So we can see that the observations for Atlanta are almost entirely below $125,000 with the exception of one observation, and that's where the bulk of our data is. What about Cincinnati? We can see here it's pretty much the same story. All of our observations are below $125,000 with the exception of one salary over here towards the right. Then we can look at San Francisco and see that, yes, there are some salaries in that same area as Atlanta and Cincinnati. However, the higher end salaries above $125,000 are almost entirely, almost exclusively based in San Francisco. So in the dot plots, in this case in jump, we can actually highlight each individual city or any combination of cities that we like to see where those individual observations fall, which can be very helpful. Now also in this case, using the software package jump, we can actually select an interval range to look at. So for this example, I selected all the observations below $50,000. We can see we have a mix of blue, green, and red. Now here in the center of our data, we can see that's also true. So say between $50,000 and $100,000, we have a fairly even mix of blue, green, and red. However, in the upper tail, say above $100,000 and especially above $125,000, we can see that the green dots begin to dominate. And of course, that represents the San Francisco salaries. So in certain software packages, in this case, Jump, we can actually select certain intervals in our dot plots and look at comparisons within those intervals. Okay, so a quick review of dot plots. Again, they are a simple way to visualize the shape of our data, but simple does not mean not useful. Sometimes the most useful tools we have are the simplest. They are easy to interpret, that also makes them valuable. We can also tell in a dot plot if our data is pulled or skewed in one direction or another, or is more symmetrical. And we can look at that distribution of points by using the individual points themselves. It's an easy way to identify outliers, again, because each point is its own dot. It also makes comparing characteristics of data between categories very easy using color and or shape. You could also use size depending on the software package, but then you have dots of different sizes and that can get confusing. So I recommend sticking to a colorblind safe color palette or using certain shapes that are easy to distinguish. But since it is called a dot plot, and sometimes those shapes can overlap and get very messy, I recommend sticking to dots, and if you're gonna do groups, select a colorblind safe color palette. So dot plots maintain the original data points, which makes seeing relative differences easier. And again, like I said before, in a lot of software packages, you can actually hover your mouse over each point to see that observation. And I want to say, and I'm not exactly sure if this is the case, I will check and leave a comment below, but I think it's the case that in Jump, in each of those stacks of observations in sort of the bin, that those are actually in order. So you can see if a certain, in this case, city, tends to dominate in the higher end salaries within a specific bin or range. But I'll look and make sure and let you know in the description below. And finally, dot plots, by their definition, are very granular. Each observation is visible. So we can do everything like using color. We can use our mouse to see certain ranges. We can use our mouse to see certain observations individually. And that is because each observation is visible to us, increasing the fidelity of the graph. Okay, so that wraps up our video on dot plots. Again, very simple, but very useful. Dot plots can provide a lot of information about our data and do it very quickly in a way that's easy to interpret. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time, which is your most valuable resource. I hope you learned something new in the video and wish you all the best in all things. Until next time, take care, bye-bye.